Well, folks, welcome to another AMA with Hearthstone developer Ixar. It's been a while since the last one of these, but with the impending Hearthstone expansion announcement next week, Ixar hopped onto Twitter to answer some questions about expansion hype and core set stuff and talked a lot about design philosophy, like less OTKs and less mana reduction and power level stuff that I think a lot of you will find pretty exciting and intriguing. So let's go ahead and jump into these questions with Ixar. So first up about the new expansion, Pokeniner asks, in your opinion, where would you rank the next expansion in terms of epicness? And Ixar says, cool cards, yes. Flavor, yes. Mechanics, yes. I think this will be a fan favorite. And that's exciting to hear. I think we need a big revolutionary expansion in Hearthstone, something to really get people excited. I, I do think the last three sets, although I, I enjoyed following the mercenaries and I liked the storyline, I do feel like they got a little bland by the end of it. You know, we saw a lot of repeating themes and characters. Even the settings were sort of traditional fantasy. They weren't all that exotic or crazy or epic or cool. They felt, you know, very nostalgic because they were referencing vanilla Warcraft, uh, World of Warcraft experiences. And I liked the nostalgia vibe, but I think we need something bigger, grander, more epic in scale to really bring people back and get some excitement in the game. So I hope indeed this one delivers on that. And from some of the chatter I've heard among the Hearthstone team, it, it sounds like a lot of people are excited about it. So let's hope indeed that it does deliver. So next up here is a question more about the design philosophy of the expansions as opposed to the theme. How different do you expect next year's expansions to be compared to Year of the Griffins? And I think a lot of you will like this answer. I certainly like what this answer says. More fine-tuned than mass overhaul, more big addition than big subtraction, less generic hand-wide cost reduction, and less OTK. Sign me up. That sounds incredible. That has certainly been one of my biggest pain points in Hearthstone of late. I think a lot of you share that same sentiment. So if we can move away from those crazy big cost discounts and crazy refined win conditions with OTKs, I think I'll enjoy Hearthstone even more than, than now. Uh, Ixar also says no year long storyline. One or two themes you probably would expect, at least one you probably wouldn't. So I wonder if this first expansion will be the unexpected or expected one. Who knows? I don't care too much. I just care about that middle line less. Reduction, less OTK. Next up, Christian asks, what makes designing a new card or mechanic exciting? Is there any in the works that you're hyped about announcing slash discussing? And Ixar says, yeah, the major thing for the next set is one of my favorite things we've done. So pretty high praise there. Uh, Ixar's been working on the game forever. So if this ranks uh, as one of his most favorite things, I think that's pretty exciting and promising. Uh, it is un in quotations with major. I don't know if that implies it's not that major or maybe that's a pun. Maybe that's referencing something. If you can think of a, a way to, to play off of that. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, teasers like this always get me pumped. I, I, you know, I'm hopeful for sure that this next expansion introduces some some game changing sort of stuff. Specifically, we saw new card types teased by Ben Lee in a recent interview. So maybe this is in reference to a new card type specifically. Moving on, some questions about general card design philosophy. Uh, what will the team focus on? I really hope board matters more. Control needs a comeback. Please, no more infinite value in one card. And Ixar says, hard problem to solve, but we are working on it. Increased card power across the board means cards that cost six plus mana have to either do many things at once or do one thing so well it heavily swings the game or wins it. So it's not really the card design philosophy has changed to be more OTK or jack of all trades friendly. It's that slow power increases over time, mean cards are forced to be this way to compete. And uh, that's logical. The stronger cards get on average, the quicker they start to win games or swing games in your favor. So you have to have things that kind of go under those cards, which creates essentially an arms race towards your win condition. You can't necessarily play slow strategies and big minions because either aggro is going to race you down or combo is going to find their win condition faster than you and they go under you and win the game before you have a chance to play your big greedy stuff. And Ixer says it's not impossible to solve, just a tricky balance. We do know the correct solution is probably not to just release very low power expansions that don't see play, have to make a bigger, wider change. Ixer says we considered that for this year, but felt there was still enough room to work in 
while also decreasing OTK or minimally interactive strategies. That said, we have some long-term solutions in mind, but nothing to announce. And I think that's in reference to the mass nerf that was discussed before where we take a uh, rotation moment and like nerf big meta impact cards and kind of lower the power level of the set uh, or all sets across the board to, to reduce the power level of the game all at once across the entire spectrum of standard format so that you can start from a lower power level standpoint, which sounds like a monumental and impossible task, but still something they've discussed and teased and seem to be suggesting something like that as well uh, as possible in the future. But for now, they wanted to keep rolling and think they can control it uh, sort of within the, the normal confines of Hearthstone. Uh, but we'll see what happens in the future. I think there's one more question actually addressing this a little bit. Yeah, here it is. If I remember correctly, uh, you said the team is considering a mass nerf to slow the pace of the game. Did it get brought up again? Or has the team considered rotation is enough of a shakeup? Ixar says, considered it for the upcoming expansion, but ultimately decided no. Format was fun, and we were confident we could deliver a fun experience without changing a wild pool of cards. Actively working on this for next year, though. As always, we'll nerf as things come up. So again, that suggests this kind of bigger, wider mass nerf could be coming in the future. I do worry about like how dramatic that might be, but ultimately... I think the game does need to ratchet it back a little bit in power level standpoints and something like this could really help in that regard and shore up the at least, you know, short to moderate future of Hearthstone. So we don't just get absolutely crazy Yu-Gi-Oh stuff in the next like three to five years as we just you know spiral out of control from a power level standpoint. So here's a good uh, administrative question. If a card was made specifically for the current core set, but it won't be part of the next core set, where will it go? Thanks. And Ixer says, you get a new card in its place. That old card will become craftable and part of the legacy set. And uh, he tags Celestial on in to confirm that's correct. So I think this is going to cause some ire. Essentially, right, the, the way the core set worked is you got this free set of, I don't know, whatever it is, 100 cards. It might be more than that, of course, but let's say 100 cards. And every year that set of 100 cards is going to swap cards in and out. So you're always going to have whatever the current 100 cards are for free. But sometimes cards that were created specifically for the core set, say like the uh, latest versions of the Dragon Aspects, Alex Raza and Deathwing and Ysera, if those rotate out of the core set, they will now be placed into the legacy set, which is kind of the catch-all, uh, you know, extra stuff set. And you will no longer own those. They were basically loaned to you while they were in the core set. So you will have to go and craft those if you want to use them in wild format. Of course, they won't be in standard. They will have rotated to legacy. But for wild players, if you still need Alex Raza or Talon or Ysera, whatever it is, there's a bunch more. You'll have to go craft that, which could be... Uh, a hurdle for if any of those cards being played in wild i of course have not cross-checked that i don't know how big of a problem that might be but you could expect uh some dust demands essentially i was kind of hoping they just give them to us for free since it's like limited to wild and duels and these other formats they're not going to be played in standard i actually guess i might have to craft some stuff for duels like i i put talon in duels decks sometimes right so if talon were to rotate to legacy I'm going to have to craft them. I won't have them for free anymore. So that's a bit of a headache. I thought they might just toss us a bone and give them to them for free. But it sounds like we got to craft them, which kind of sucks. I guess we'll just have to wait and see which ones actually get rotated. Maybe this won't be a significant problem if it's only a couple and they're not especially relevant. But, you know, if all the aspects and tail and all these really powerful cards are rotated, that could be a, a really substantial dust commitment, which would absolutely suck. Here's a question about class identities. Are they still a thing? And if so, do we get an update on what they're supposed to look like? We talk about class identities internally. One of the harder things to agree on. Unlikely to get an external update anytime soon, but we're actively thinking about an update internally. Uh, I know a lot of people put a lot of stock in that last class identity thing. Like, I don't, I don't know where it's at somewhere, but it was basically like, oh, this class doesn't have a lot of card draw, but has powerful things. This class doesn't have single target removal. This class doesn't have burst damage. Those sorts of things. I, I'm not as big of a fan of that, honestly. I think it's okay to have some fluidity there and have classes evolve and change over time. If we have a moment where Priest is all about card draw and then another moment where they're not, or Priest has burst damage and then they don't, I think that's fine, as long as it still feels flavorful and fitting for the class. I know from like a Warcraft standpoint, 
Every class can kind of do a little bit of everything. I mean, not all classes have access to healing and stuff, but there are DPS builds. There are tank builds for a variety of classes. So I think having a lot of flexibility there and just playing to the flavor more than the mechanics is completely fine and helps the game evolve. So this does not matter much to me, but I know some of you uh, want a more refined and static identity for classes, and eh, that's fine too. In regards to other modes, here's a question about uh, new arena matchmaking or ranking system. Is that a thing that's coming? We have a mode team now that something like this would fall under, and they took on a rather intensive project recently. Very curious what that might be. When that is finished in probably one to two months, that team will start planning for the long-term future of arena, tavern brawl duels, and single player. I think it's cool that there's a dedicated team here, which means there's hope for advancement in all of these different game modes. Arena in particular definitely feels like it's been left out a lot. Duels has frankly been getting some pretty good updates and consistent stuff thanks to Atesh and all his hard work. So um, happy to see that. But if that same sort of uh, energy was given to Tavern Brawl Arena, that would be a, a nice change for people who care about those game modes. Uh, I, I don't play a lot of either, but hey, if Arena got some updates, I would definitely hop in Arena. I think it'd be pretty darn fun. Here's a question about mercenaries. Anything you can say about the excess coins problem in mercenaries? Uh, Xer says, I'm starting to get a little involved in mercenaries, and all I can say for now is that it is one of the problems that pains the Mercs lead more than any other. Actively thinking about solutions, but nothing to talk about at this moment. Um, I mean, I'm glad it's being looked at, right? But I just feel like this has taken way too long. It's been a problem since the first week of mercenaries that people identified immediately. It's been a pain point the entire time, and it might be too late. Like, you've already driven so many people away out of frustration. Uh, man, it's just taking forever. Like, by the time it gets here, I hope it's enough that it revives mercenaries and makes it a little bit more compelling from an economy standpoint or time commitment standpoint. Uh, I still want to like mercenaries. I still really want to get in there because I think the characters are so cool. I actually really like the PvP gameplay. It's just too hard to keep up with for me from a time commitment standpoint, certainly from a cost commitment standpoint, if I wanted to catch up buying coins and stuff. So some kind of fix here for this coin economy has to happen. And uh, I've heard mercenaries, dedicated people echoing the exact same sentiment. It's pretty obviously an enormous problem that's taking way too long to fix. So this next one's pretty important, I think. Right now, there's no way to report abusive behavior in Hearthstone chat, either on client or Blizzard site. What's the reasoning, and will that change? Ixar says we're working on it. And uh, yeah, that's another long overdue feature that it sounds like we might finally get. Uh, it's going to be nice to be able to identify people who are abusing the chat system and hopefully eliminate them from the system. If not banning them outright, then at least maybe limiting their ability to chat. Because what happens right now in Harson is nobody wants to take friend requests because there's a pretty good chance you're just going to get yelled at, insulted, threatened, etc. And it's really hard to find friends in Hearthstone in that world because some people just don't want to have to deal with that or take that risk. I don't want to take that risk on stream often because I don't want to broadcast that stuff to hundreds of people. So it just it's like the friend request system is really hard to utilize in a you know open environment. Obviously, if you know people in real life, it's great. But uh, finding and, and discovering friends and like asking for their cool deck that you just played against on ladder doesn't happen because of this. So once you start to eliminate those bad actors from the chat system, hopefully that encourages people to become friends and build some communities and and friendships in game. I think that could go a really long way. And I'm sh just shocked that it took eight years eight years since Hearthstone came out to, to finally get a feature like this one. And then finally, closing things out, has Ixar played the new Warcraft mobile game that's coming, uh, well, not coming, but I guess being announced in May? Uh, yes, no is enough. And Ixar says, no comment. Ask me again soon. I don't know if that's a no comment that he hasn't played it yet and you can ask him later, or if he's not allowed to talk about it yet until it gets announced in May and then... We can ask him for all of his juicy thoughts. And uh, I I'm excited, honestly. Of course, this could be a cash grab, awful Farmville Warcraft game, right? That nobody wants to play. Or at least I don't want to play. I'm sure actually a ton of people would want to play that, but certainly not me. And, and I'd say a lot of you. Um, it would probably be the most popular game Blizzard ever had, but <laughs> just not for us. Um, but if it's something cool, I, you know, if it's monetized well, I'm all about it. Hearthstone is a Warcraft mobile game by most metrics, and we love it, right? It's great. 
So I'm tentatively very pumped for this. Uh, I will still be a PC first person and I will hope that it has a PC client because if it doesn't, it's probably something I wouldn't stream much, but still nonetheless excited, uh, hopeful, I guess, to see what exactly this thing could be all about. It sounds like we'll find out in a couple months time. And uh, there you go, that wraps it up for this AMA. I think some pretty promising stuff here. It's always about delivery, of course, in the world of Hearthstone, but I'm excited to hear less OTKs. I think it sounds like the expansion's gonna be really fun and have some some neat new mechanic, at least, that is excited about. So uh, I think Hearthstone's been in a lot of a lull lately. I think people are just kinda, uh, it's feeling a little bland in a lot of ways. So some revitalization, some new life could go a really long way for regular Hearthstone and probably even Battlegrounds. I feel like even Battlegrounds has had a bit of a lull lately. So we'll see how well uh, the Hearthstone team delivers on some of these promises, but it's nice to have at least a little bit of hope. And we'll talk more next week when the expansion gets announced. That said, thanks much as always for watching. And until next time, game on.